Hello and welcome back to my channel. In today's session, we will look at some scenario based um, uh, interview questions for your e to service. So uh, this is going to be some scenario based uh, questions that you can expect for your AWS um, interview. So whether you are preparing for your interview or you are just looking to enhance your EC2 uh, skills, then this video is just for you. Once again, before I start off with the session, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. So the first question we have is you're running a website on an EC2 instance and you experience a sudden traffic surge. What steps would you take to handle the increase in traffic without any downtime? So for this, we can make use of auto scaling groups. So auto scaling groups can be used when you want to automate the scaling up and scaling down of your instances. So uh, we need to ensure that auto scaling is enabled so that uh, uh, we can automatically launch new instances to handle the increase in the traffic. Uh, we can also attach the EC2 instances behind a load balancer. So this load balancer will help us to distribute the incoming traffic across multiple EC2 instances. Um, we can also consider increasing the um, instance size or you know changing the instance type like for example if you're uh, currently using t2.medium you can consider changing it to uh, t2.large to uh, accommodate the higher load we can also make use of uh, cloudfront as our content delivery network which will help us to store uh, data as a cache uh, closer to the users and this will help us to reduce the load on the EC2 instances. The next question we have is a critical security vulnerability has been discovered and you need to apply a patch to multiple EC2 instances in production. How would you approach this without causing any downtime? So for this we can make use of systems manager service. Now this service can help us to automate uh, patching multiple ec2 instances so we can uh, make use of ssm documents or something like that uh, we can also implement a blue green deployment strategy so under this we will be launching new instances with the patch applied so whatever the security patch we have and then we will switch the traffic to the new instances using the load balancer or uh, uh, using route 53 and then we will terminate the old instances so if downtime cannot be avoided, then uh, we will need to schedule a maintenance window and notify the users that you know there's gonna be a, a downtime, and we will uh, we will patch the EC2 instances during that downtime. The next question we have is: An EC2 instance has failed a system status check. What steps would you take to troubleshoot and resolve this issue? So. Uh, system status check basically indicates there's some uh, underlying hardware failure or uh, there's some uh, networking issue so we can uh, uh, check the cloudwatch system status check that is available in the console uh, so to, to fix this we can try to stop and uh, start the instance uh, or migrate the instance you know uh, when we stop and start the instance um, uh, EC2 will try to migrate that instance to a new hardware now even then if the instance does not recover then we can create a copy uh, of the EBS volume we can create a snapshot and then launch new EC2 instance and then uh, restore this snapshot and attach the EBS volume to recover the data so uh, if you're still having this issue you can contact AWS you can reach out to them create a ticket and ask uh, help uh, uh, ask them to uh, figure out what is happening and how we can fix this issue the next question we have is you're managing a large number of ec2 instances for a long-term project how would you optimize your aws bill for these instances so uh, for this we can evaluate and purchase reserved instances or um, uh, savings plans uh, so this will um, you know help us to reduce the cost if you're looking to run the instances for uh, longer periods we can also consider using spot instances for any non-critical uh, business workloads or uh, making use of batch processing workloads uh, and we can make use of the low pricing advantage that we get with the spot instances uh, we can also look at right sizing the instances by um, um, looking at the AWS cost explorer which will help us to uh, review the performance, review the cost and then choose the appropriate instances based on the CPU memory.
memory and network usage uh, and then finally we can also look at um, uh, shutting down the instances which are no longer used or any under uh, utilized instances by making use of aws trust advisor recommendations so basically you know delete any unused instances uh, unused snapshots volumes so basically anything that we're no longer using uh, go ahead and delete them the next question we have is after launching an ec2 instance you realize you selected the wrong ami and instance type what would you do to rectify this without losing the data so for this uh we will need to stop the ec2 instance and then create an ami from this existing ec2 instance to preserve uh, any data or any configurations uh, that we have on the ec2 instance and then launch a new ec2 instance with the uh, correct instance type and uh, use the ami that we have uh, created okay and then attach the necessary ebs volumes from the old ec2 instance to the new one so that we get the data back so we cannot do anything with the existing instance we can only change the instance type uh, we cannot change the ami so we will need to uh, launch new instance with the right ami but then we can take a backup of the data and then attach the data back to the new instance so that we get the data back the next question we have is your application uh, running on an ec2 instance is experiencing performance degradation and cloudwatch shows high cpu utilization how would you resolve this so for this we can make use of auto scaling to launch uh, new instances to uh, share the load uh, we can check the instance type uh, if it is appropriate for the workload and if you feel that the instance type is um, less then you can resize the instance type to a larger uh, type like you know changing from t2.micro to t2.medium or uh, t2.medium to t2.large and then so on uh, then we can inst investigate uh, application level issues like if there's any memory leaks or there are any inefficient queries that are running which is uh, taking too much of cpu and increasing the cpu uh, load uh, we can also make use of enhanced networking or elastic network adapter uh, if um, you need high network performance and there is a bottleneck that you want to avoid we can make use of that the next question we have is you're running an application that writes data to an ec2 instances local storage how would you ensure data is not lost if the instance is terminated so for this we will be making use of ebs volume so if you are using instance store then we will need to switch from the instance store volume to the ebs volumes so ebs volumes will help us to make the data persistent which does not depend on the uh, uh, life cycle of the ec2 instance so even if you terminate the instance or if you stop the instance the data would be persistent uh, we can also consider taking uh, regular backups of the ebs volumes to back up any critical data um, we can also use s3 buckets or amazon rds for critical data storage which provides with the uh, built-in uh, durability and backups so basically make use of EBS volumes and then back up the data so that in case something goes wrong, we can uh, restore the data. The next question we have is your team needs to be alerted when an EC2 instance's CPU utilization exceeds 80%. How would you configure this in AWS? So for this, we will be making use of Amazon CloudWatch, which is our monitoring service. So for this, we will be creating an alarm for the CPU utilization, uh, which will help us to monitor the uh, CPU utilization on the EC2 instance. So with this, we'll be creating an alarm threshold, which is let's say 80% and then we will be specifying the action. So whenever the threshold exceeds or it reaches the threshold, then the action will be taken now the action can be simply sending out a notification uh, using the sns topic or uh, uh, triggering auto scaling to launch new instances to uh, handle the load we can also ensure that the cloudwatch alarm covers an appropriate evaluation period like you know if the cpu utilization is high for a period of five minutes then take the action we can also do that the next question we have is you have launched an EC2 instance in a public subnet, but uh, it cannot access the internet. What might be wrong and how would you resolve it? So for this, we will need to verify the VPC uh, configuration. So we'll need to check if the VPC is associated in the route tables and the route tables has a route to the internet gateway. Um, we'll need to ensure that the security groups has appropriate rules like the 
uh, outbound rules inbound rules that allows the necessary uh, traffic uh, since the instance is running in a public subnet we will we'll need to check if the instance has a, a public ip address or an elastic ip address assigned uh, to it and then we'll also need to ensure that the network acls are not blocking any outbound traffic so basically check the uh, vpc configurations to make sure all the configurations under properly check the firewalls uh, check the IP addresses uh, to make sure everything is working fine. The next question we have is how would you prevent accidental termination of an important EC2 instance? So for this AWS provides a feature which is the termination protection. We can make use of this to avoid any accidental termination or deletion of your EC2 instances. So the settings will help us to prevent any instances from uh, uh, accidental termination. It can be via the AWS console, AWS CLI or via APIs. We can also make use of IAM policies to uh, restrict the permissions, you know, like in this case, uh, you don't want to give permissions to terminate the instances. We can make use of IAM policies for that. The next question we have is how would you set up a highly available multi-AZ architecture for your EC2 instances? So for this, we will need to uh, launch our instances in at least uh, two availability zones to uh, make the instances highly available and then have these instances behind a load balancer which will help us to distribute the traffic across these uh, instances running in multiple availability zones. Uh, we can also configure auto scaling which will help us to um, automate the scaling up and scaling down of the EC2 instances uh, like you know uh, during the CPU utilization. We can also implement multi-AZ RDS to basically make the database highly available or any other database replication techniques for the backend database. So this will help you to make your application highly available. The next question we have is after launching an EC2 instance, you realize that external services cannot access your application. How would you troubleshoot this? So for this, we will need to check our security groups, whether we are allowing the uh, inbound traffic or not, like, you know, uh, based on the port number, whatever we are using. So we need to ensure the inbound traffic is uh, allowed. We'll also need to ensure we are using the right source IP address, the side of blocks that we have uh, defined in the security group that is uh, correct to allow the uh, traffic. Uh, we will also need to verify the NACLs to see if you're not uh, uh, to make sure we're not blocking any traffic at the subnet level. So basically, check the firewalls to see if you're blocking any traffic and uh, uh, if you're allowing the necessary uh, traffic from the external application. The next question we have is: You need to move an EC2 instance from one AWS region to another. How would you do it? So for this, we will need to create an AMI of the existing EC2 instance and then copy this AMI to the other region where we want to launch the new EC2 instance. Uh, so once we have copied the AMI, we can launch the new EC2 instance using this um, uh, AMI that we have copied to the destination region. Uh, and then we can att attach any EBS volumes or set up any new configurations based on the requirement you have in the new region. So that's basically how we can copy uh, one EC2 instance from one region to another region. The next question we have is you need to log and monitor system level metrics like memory usage, disk usage from an EC2 instance. How would you set this up? So for this, again, we make use of the CloudWatch service. So in this case, we will need to install the CloudWatch, uh, CloudWatch agent on the EC2 instances uh, and then configure this agent to collect the uh, system level metrics. Could be your uh, memory usage, your disk usage, your network uh, usage, and then send these um, as logs to Amazon uh, CloudWatch. Uh, and then we can make use of CloudWatch dashboards to visualize these metrics. We can also set up CloudWatch alarms to get notifications or to take some actions when uh, threshold is breached. So we'll need to make use of CloudWatch service for this. The next question we have is how would you back up and recover an EC2 instance with minimal downtime? So for this, we'll need to simply go and take a backup of the EBS volumes, which is creating the snapshots of your EBS volumes. So snapshots can be taken while the instance is running and then uh, create an AMI from the instance to uh, backup the entire configuration of the EC2 instance. Uh, and in case of we want to do the recovery, we can simply launch a new EC2 instance from the AMI that we have created or 
simply restore the EBS volume snapshot and then attach that to the new EC2 instance so that we get the data um, to the new EC2 instance. And that brings us to the end of our uh, uh, scenario based um, uh, EC2 interview questions related to AWS. Uh, if you found this video helpful, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Uh, please subscribe to the channel and share the video with uh, anyone who is preparing for uh, AWS interview. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.